Hello everyone, my name is James and this is my first YouTube video. I'm not really sure how to do most of this stuff. We'll have to see how the volume balance is with the voice and all that, but if uh, if there are any problems or you, there's anything you think I could work on, let me know in the comments. Now, this is the first video of a series that I want to put together. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it the Real World Rocket series. Uh, I've always been a big fan of the glory days of Apollo in the uh, 60s and 70s. And so I have put together a save with some of uh, some of the famous rockets from the glory days of NASA to uh, see how they fly, put them in orbit around uh, Kerbin, and hopefully eventually get to the moon. My idea is to fly one mission an episode. See if we can go through Mercury, Gemini, and the Apollo missions, and then, of course, culminating with Apollo 17. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, I hope people are going to enjoy it. I am going to download some mods so we can put together rockets that look like the real things, and uh, hopefully ones that fly like them, too. So, let's get started. Okay, so... I have already wheeled out one to the launch pad. It's uh, one of the FASA, uh, F-A-S-A, I don't know how I'm pronouncing that, one of those rockets. Uh, these guys did a really nice job modeling and texturing some parts from the Mercury and Gemini flights, and those are going to be really fun for us to use. Um, they have the Mercury Redstone and the Mercury Atlas along with the Gemini Titan vehicles, and so we're going to try flying those, see how we like those, and uh, Put those in orbit, see what we think. Now, you may have to bear with me on the loading time here. I am running this on a MacBook Pro, which is not well known for its computing power. So, uh, if the wait times get to be too long, let me know. I'm going to have to figure out how to edit these videos, see if I can edit the loading times out. But uh, I've tried to prep it, you know, put it on the launch pad instead of leaving it in the VAB so we can put it together and it'll go faster this way. Well, we're already at the launch pad, but we're s still loading, obviously. I probably Okay, so here we go. As the background loads in, now this is in uh, 0.19.1 of KSP, and that unfortunately did a number on the MacBook for processing. They, uh, the new Unity engine kind of screwed things up, so we'll see how the, how the flight goes. But, here is the beautiful Mercury Redstone model. We have the, uh, the standard Command 1 pot, or Mark 1 Command pot up here. And uh, the guys who modeled this, put this together, did a really nice job. Guys and girls, I suppose. Did a really nice job. We have uh, some extra parts, a launch escape tower, and what is essentially a solid rocket booster, but is listed as liquid fuel. This solid fuel refers to the launch escape tower. Okay. So, let's, uh, let's get this flying. The first manned mission of the Mercury flight, or the Mercury program, was flown by Alan B. Shepard, America's first astronaut in space. He flew on the Mercury Redstone, a suborbital craft, to uh, just, a, just a point in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. He was only in space for about 15 minutes, from launch to touchdown, splashdown, actually. So I don't think we're even going to get that long, but we're going to put this together and see how we do. So let's give us a countdown. Three, two, one, and ignition. I'm going to scroll up here so we can get a nice look at this. Might want to engage tracking. That's probably a good thing. getting a bit of an overheat, so I'm going to throttle down a bit. Look at that, our velocity is basically constant. Yeah, so this is really a nice model, really well put together. Uh, I think it's really fun to fly, too. I mean, it's, you know, suborbital. I don't think it's possible to get this into orbit, but I'm not the best pilot there ever was. Uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty well nice pretty well done pretty nice to fly and uh, you can see I'm, I'm my hands are off the keyboard I'm really not doing anything aside from just looking at it there's the Sun there 
Get a nice artsy shot. I'm going to do a pretty standard ascent here. We're going to go up to about 8k uh, meters and then pitch over, start our gravity turn just like we would for any other flight. But uh, I don't think we're going to get too far. We'll see how we do. I really like the new uh, animations. They did a nice job on that in the in 19.1. The uh, it it adds a nice layer of realism to the game, and of course we can see Jeb's insanity in all its glory. So we're just getting up here. I don't know exactly when they fired the launch escape tower. Uh, the American rockets of the late 50s were known for having uh, a propensity to explode, but I think I think I will jettison that shortly after we begin our gravity turn, which is coming up shortly. We're going a little fast. I like to keep it under 150 meters per second, below 10,000 meters, just because of the drag. Boy, this thing flies like a sports car. Of course, that's not the most intelligent thing I've ever said, but compared to some of the heavy launch vehicles I've been flying lately, this thing is uh, really light to the touch. All right, let's get rid of our launch escape tower. Stage. There she goes. And just like that, out of the render range. Climbing up towards 20k, I'm going to pitch over to 60 degrees. Perfect. Of course, this isn't really what you would call a gravity turn. A gravity turn, uh, there's one small adjustment made to the rocket's uh, trajectory immediately as it leaves the pad, and then the only steering force used is gravity. They don't steer rockets when, they, uh, when they're actually flying. It's all done by gravity, and that's why it's called a gravity turn. So, all right, above 35,000 meters. We're just about to run out of fuel. There we go. Jettison that. Get clear. And we will fire our, our remaining liquid engine to boost us a little higher into orbit. There goes our launch stage. It really looks like the, the uh, Mercury capsule, isn't it? Really nice to see. I'm going to make it in this space. Yeah, looks like it. Let's check our map. Ignore that space debris. shouldn't be there. <laughs> First man space flight. Yeah, we made it. Okay. So we're about two minutes from Apple Apps. There's the space music. Well, you know, even if this game doesn't run perfectly on my computer, it, uh, what? That just glitched? It just totally glitched, didn't it? That's random. Unless I got rid of that. Did I stage that and I just forgot? There was an easy way to check that. This is about the point in the flight when they would have pitched over anyway. I'm going to pitch over. There it goes. Yeah, this thing's pretty sensitive. I did okay. I totally must have just staged that thing, didn't I? You guys are all laughing at me, I'm sure. There it goes. On this flight, Alan Shepard became the first astronaut to fly in space, first American astronaut. 
I guess you could say first astronaut. The Soviets called their astronauts cosmonauts. Alan Shepard famously said, looking out his cockpit window, what a beautiful view. Let's see how we did. Ah, how do you like that? That's not bad. That's a pretty good view. I'll try rolling over a little bit. Yeah, it went too far. Like I said, this thing's pretty touchy. We'll leave it at that. That's a pretty view. Okay. And with that, let's begin to prep for re-entry. I suppose we don't really need tracking on anymore. Can't see anything when we do that. This is really a beautiful game. First time I got into orbit, I just watched my ship just float. I just watched it. It was it was amazing. It's there's nothing quite like the uh, the the feeling this game gives you of actually accomplishing something, even more so than in Minecraft. It's uh, it's really something. I'm gonna speed up the flight a little bit here. Oh, don't need to be throttled up anymore. Don't have anything left to carry. Okay, let's speed up a little. I'm a little concerned about time. We just passed Apoabs. Begin falling towards the atmosphere. That's going to be a bit of a pain to correct. Just like I thought. Ugh. Well, we are going for splashdown, at least, so that's accurate. We're going to be hitting the atmosphere here pretty quick. You can see we're only at about 8 minutes. We're not going to quite reach 15 minutes, 22 seconds, like Alan Shepard, but that's okay. Just hitting the atmosphere now. Looks like our vector is going to fix itself by the air resistance. Sure enough. See, my game doesn't lag as much when we're just looking at the bottom of the capsule. But of course, and we don't get the nice views of space, so it's kind of a trade-off there. I've set the render quality down a little bit, but what's the point of going to space if there's nothing to look at? As we swing back through our retrograde vector, I'm going to turn on tracking, so we don't be, we're not flopping around as we pass through the atmosphere. Looks like we are just about going to hit the atmosphere, prep for re-entry. This is one of the coolest things about this update, is the re-entry heat. And here we go. Watch the G-forces climb. It really is incredible. God, that's fun to watch. Okay. Coming down through 10,000 meters. We're going to jettison... Oh, mock effects. Very nice. Not that extreme. That's cool. Let's jettison that. And it's going to fall right back down on top of the ship. Let's jettison our chutes. Get rid of that. There we go. Don't need to carry that down all the way. Let's 
We have a nice, accurate Mercury style shoot. It's good to see. We're in physical time warp because we are within the atmosphere. So I'm going to have to be a little bit careful once we get down to about 500 meters, but you can see our velocity vector is slowing down quite a bit. Okay, and the chute is open. And so, Jeb Kerman becomes our first astronaut in space. We will fast forward down to the landing here. Let's look back up at the sky so the rendering goes a little faster. Floating down at a nice sedately 5.1 meters per second. We are coming in. And splash down. We made it. Okay, 12.38, not too inaccurate. So. That's our first flight of the Real World Rocket series. Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, coming up next, we have Gus Grissom's flight. Thanks, everyone.